Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for joining um, our session. We're gonna be talking today about Connections 8 and how to do customizations. My name is Bill Weimer. I'm one of the architects on the uh, Connections engineering team. And I'm joined by Stefan Hessler, who's one of our uh, key, leads one of our squads that was uh, very focused on customization and the UX uh, for, for Connections 8. Uh, Stefan, if you wanna say hello. Yeah, thanks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> thanks. All right, so let's dive by, right in. We've got a, a lot packed into a small small uh, uh, time frame. So I will take you through a little bit of the UI overview and kind of the terminology that we use throughout the uh, the presentation and what it you know what it looks like on the um, on the connections eight the new UX. Talk about so, sort of what our customization goals were, the things that we were trying to achieve, and then really uh, Stefan's going to take us through and dive into the meat of this presentation, give you some good examples and some capabilities that are really out there and possible today. And if we've got some time at the end, we'll we'll wrap up with a few upgrade considerations to consider. Next slide. All right. So this is a screenshot of our um, of our new UX for Connections Eight, and we will start with just going over a little bit of the terminology here. So over on the left, that's what we call our side navigation. So this is really the the navigation into all the Connections apps. Uh, this is going to have everything on there from homepage to communities, all the things that are there but it's also quite extensible with the ability to add in new applications and things like that. Each one of the apps is typically gonna have a secondary navigation within it. So uh, that's always gonna be a, a nav across the top to let you into the different sections. We're in a wikis application here, so it gives you the ability to show index members and trash. Uh, depending on the app, it may or may not have a third level nav. So this is wikis. We certainly are gonna have a table of contents here. So we've got our third level nav that we talk about. Um, we do have an optional admin, admin banner. So if you want to display uh, you know, some critical information to your users, uh, you know, you know, it may be on, maybe off. It's, it's certainly not on by default. Uh, that top little area is going to be using that. And then the next piece, I think, uh, header area, right. So we've got a customizable header area. Uh, right now it's going to say HCL connections out of the box, but this is something you can modify to do, be your own brand and change that icon there. Uh, we will have an ever-present search box always at the top of the screen within this header. It uh, gives you the ability to search uh, all the, the, the same types of search that you're doing before, but also the new, the new search like recent searches and things that are coming with, uh, with Connections 8. And over on the right side, we've got a, uh, an ever-present share and file upload icons that are there. This one also happens to be showing our language switcher, which is an optional thing you could have uh, if, you're, if you want to. And um, a new thing too is the important to me bar over on the right. So important to me was added with, now this is only gonna show up with component pack, um, but it does keep the, you know, the individuals, people that you've uh, said are important to you. It's gonna, imp it's gonna impact your top update feeds and you know, who, you know, the types of information you see in your top updates cards, uh, but it also kind of gives you a way to bookmark people that you visit regularly uh, or communities that you visit regularly. So you can also add communities over on that bar. And finally, the main content, of course. So each one of the apps is going to uh, have its main content page uh, that can be modified. This will have typically, you know, follow a pattern. There will be various widgets over on the right uh, with the, the page in, in the center. This wiki page is one that can expand uh, to kind of uh, give you more editing room uh, on that on that particular screen. So go into our the custom the goals that we had for customization uh, when we were starting this project. So of course the the primary thing, we wanted to be able to, of course, modify uh, both functional and behavioral things like being able to uh, add new applications or change the way um, uh, cer certain things work, as well as cosmetic things. So being able to change colors or themes or styles or uh, icons, things like that. Um, we knew we were going to be building quite a few new React components, uh, almost all of the new navigation areas. App navigation components are React-based components. So we wanted, we built customization into those directly from the get-go uh, to make it easier for us. And probably the biggest change in Connections 8 versus customization versus older releases of Connections for customization is that we were looking to do more of a, what we would call our declarative configuration. So rather than, you know, requiring that you kind of dive into JavaScript and, and update JSPs like we've done in the past, like in header JSP, we wanted to be able to give you a way to specify uh, just some data configuration parameters to be able to change colors or uh, add new applications or change the behaviors. 
So that's what we've we've largely been trying to do uh, with the JSON payloads and app registry, or being able to define. We also have another way to do it that I'll, that I'll get to as well. But that's probably the biggest difference between uh, eight and seven. We still have the ability to do update JavaScript and update the JSPs. That's still there, uh, but we're just hopefully we've at least for the most common cases we've been able to define this in, in configuration, and we think that makes it easier to administer. Um, if you are using app registry, that will also give you the ability to make dynamic changes. So uh, rather than having to make JSP updates, which have to be compiled and has require a server restart, we're able to just go and fetch these updates dynamically when on a page refresh, um, as well as things like, you know, another goal was being able to you know, upgrade durability, the ability to, uh, when I upgrade from one version of the next, we certainly don't want to lose those upgrades. So we keep them saved in a Mongo database for persistence. And finally, Stefan's going to take you through uh, some of the documentation examples that we're doing. We're going to take advantage of the, of the open source repository that we have out there. And we want to be able to push a bunch of these things out to, to GitHub for the future. Next slide. So that kind of leads us into app registry extensions. This is the primary way that we are um, going to describe and Stefan's going to take you through this. So these are really just going to be definitions of some JSON payloads that uh, will be in our documentation that gives you things to update your connection services or extensions like banners. Uh, that, that, that example off on the right is, is, a, is a, got a type of a com.htl.connections.banner and it's got a message, a data parameter that gives you the, the um, the message that would display. All of these things are going to be saved. So as you create these, these applications within App Registry, there are definitions, the, the code that's related to them all gets saved in Mongo so it doesn't get destroyed. Um, and they're very easy to kind of turn on and off. Uh, so you can kind of experiment and, <clears throat> and make modifications as you go. So we already talked about, right, they'll they'll take advantage on the next refresh when using App Register. And it really it's it's this is very similar to if you're all familiar with customizer this is how customizer would work as well uh, but we've expanded in some new areas with these with these new extensions next slide and i was talking about so so there's certainly going to be customers that do not are not running um, app registry and component pack we still have the same capabilities that we we can you know make all these um configurations that we're talking about they can be done uh in a non-component pack uh, way, it's typically you really just need to create these JavaScript variables that would be scoped to your Windows, probably by updating a JSP, something like header.jsp, and we will have some more documentation on and give some examples for for how this can be done. Uh, so it can all be done. You just don't get that dynamic nature of it. So you would have this would require server restart when we do that. One exception to that is that we do have an, uh, an API um, within the HCL connections extension. To Toolkit that is included, you know, it's one of the base foundation things that's included as with Connections 8. And we do have a little API in there that allows you to make banner updates to turn it on, to turn it off, to be able to set the value. So if you needed to, you know, quickly be able to go put some urgent information and pop up a banner real quick, you would not be required to take an outage and, and, and turn a connection, or you would not be required to restart connections for that to take place. Next slide. So I think, uh, Stefan, this will take, I will hand it over to you to mm -hmm. start by taking us through some customized documentation. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, yeah, with, with all of this being preluded, particularly the GitHub documentation, the declarative configuration and app registry and all, there, there is a lot of um, framework that we put around or want to put around uh, the customization aspects. And um, previously, if any of you have customized your connections at the moment, you know there are hundreds of thousands of options on how to do things, uh, but ultimately it requires you to know um, particular programming languages, uh, know how to touch JSPs, have to figure out for yourself what our files entail. And not all of those things are clearly supported or clearly documented. The entire uh, story about upgrading was also another topic that uh, Bill mentioned. So. This is the main reason why we want to uh, go down this app registry um, route. Um, but we also see that, of course, this means there is an inherent need for a lot of very good documentation on what kind of options you have, uh, how to do certain things, and where are also the limits so that you can really um, read up on those and have a good, very good feel for how to introduce your things. So with that, I would like to jump over into a live scenario. So first of all, we have this um, little connections eight environment up here 
It has component pack installed. It has our latest uh, development branch. And of course, uh, all of the changes from the ICA gold build, um, where I want to run you through how you would typically go about uh, creating these um, extensions and um, customizing and configuring how to customize uh, your connections environment. I also have uh, our documentation piece up here that's still in our uh, internal GitHub, but uh, this is scheduled to be coming up on our open GitHub. So once this is all available, we still see this as part of our uh, um, ADO deliverables, but it uh, will come a little bit later in our um, open GitHub repositories that um, some of you may already know through the customizer documentation. So this is where all of this will live and where you will find that. And uh, this allows us, of course, to keep it a little bit more close to the developers and uh, to the technical focus here. Um, there will be uh, the documentation around uh, how you can uh, do all of those customizations, but we're also planning to put a couple more information in, particularly with the entire redesign. We also want to get some information in on our decision making on uh, how those components have been styled and how to expect these components. And um, also, of course, to keep us uh, accountable for uh, any kind of decisions and so that you can know if you encounter any behavior that may not seem quite um, correct to you whether this is by design or whether you may have identified a bug that uh, we can address based on the stem um but yeah th this is all stuff that you will uh, see um rather soon what i really want to focus on here is uh, this particular uh, piece of documentation the custom config extensions because this is really the heart and soul of um, of this app registry uh, driven declarative configuration. So there's a lot of browser text that tries to set the stage on um, what this is for and uh, how to deal with this. But it also gives you a couple of quick examples on uh, how to create these extensions, both as app registry and as Bill mentioned as well, um, through the um, JavaScript objects through a non CP enabled environment. But uh, given that we have component pack installed and given that this is really the preferred way uh, for us that has a lot more um, intuitive features and specifically the dynamic uh, enabling. It's really a good um, benefit in that sense. I want to showcase that through the app registry. So um, the first step on how you would go about creating a customization like that would be to go into your app registry. That's typically on slash app reg slash apps in your connections environment. Um, and I have this open here already. You can also see I have created a couple of uh, customizations that uh, we will go through one by one to, to kind of show um, yeah, what kind of options there are. But for now, I want to create a very bare bones, uh, simple um, uh, yeah, extension just based on the documentation. So for that, you would go into the new app uh, or click the new app button and then go into the code editor. There are other ways of creating your extensions as well in a more um, driven kind of experience, but uh, we try to provide code samples because um, many of the information in these extensions are uh, pretty much common across the board and we try to, uh, to align them as, as much as we can. And then there's always one big area that really holds the uh, customization and the info important information that are specific to you, to you use case and to your changes. So you would go ahead and you have a template here that you can just copy and paste into that uh, text editor. And uh, there are a couple of information here. I'm gonna do one quick change, uh, which I explain in a second as well. Um, but yeah, this would be all that you would need to do to get going and have your first customization enabled in the connections environment. Um, and then there's nothing else to do than saving to persisting uh, these changes. It's automatically enabled by default and from there, you can jump into your connections environment and refresh to see those changes. And what you will see in this uh, first example is that um, our navigation will turn to green, our highlighting will turn to a different shade of green as well as uh, our header bar. So um, we created a customization that defines and declares specific branding that we want to show on our page. And this is really all that you have to do. You can disable this again, to uh, do not have those changes. You can make changes ad hoc to play around with it. We're even thinking about, um, and this nicely fits into these kind of concepts, and um, Richard also alluded to this in, in the Domino experience, uh, to have a kind of wizard to allow you to click around and, and find the correct configuration for you that uh, automatically gets pulled in through some admin tooling. But for the time being, um, we have documentation and the properties uh, are nicely outlined. 
So to just go in here and give you a little bit more information on, uh, on what we did, I can jump back to the presentation because we have one uh, slide coming up here um, in the customization examples that uh, basically outlines our um, samples and um, what we just saw. So uh, in this payload, um, in this code basically that you add to the extension, there are a couple of different areas that uh, are important for different parts of, uh, of information that uh, our components use to uh, understand what exactly um, they should be uh, passed at and what the outcome should be ultimately, what the customizations should be. First of all, uh, in the top here, you have a section for a name, title, description. This is really just for you and for your admins to kind of know what this extension is all about and what the purpose of this extension is. There are specific services and paths as well as a state that you can set that allows you to enable and disable these um, customizations to allow you to even scope these customizations um, or extensions in case you may not want to have it um, on connections globally, but rather on uh, specific services or different um, extensions for different services. This is um, what would allow you to do that. Uh, generally, I think the majority of the components we have so far are more catered towards uh, a global connections system like the header bar, like navigation. Uh, you'll see some of the other examples shortly. Um, but it's kind of the, the information that is contained in there. The next important thing is the extension type. So you can see here this extension type is uh, ComHCL Connections Custom Style. And this is important for the component to uh, understand what kind of um, configuration and extensions are available to them. Every piece of the, um, of the UI listens in to, to a different type and the type defines really what kind of payload they will get. And the payload here, this is the next one. Uh, it's a uh, basically JSON object, a key value object. And they are very specific as well to the particular components. Some components expect colors, some components expect definitions of if something should be shown or not, uh, if something should be added or not. And this is very specific. So this is all based on the documentation again. Um, but uh, this is the information that it pulls in and uh, processes to understand what kind of adjustments should be done to the baseline um, UI that we have in the first place. Um, there's also one group, the cache expiration. You saw me changing it to zero. This is about uh, request caching. So of course, uh, for our components to understand um, what uh, customization they should have, they have to get this information and this is done through normal REST API requests to our app registry persistence. To not have this happen all the time on every single request because it's really just um, not necessary in most cases, thinking of a adjusted header, you probably won't adjust that for the next couple of days or months. So you may as well uh, persist that and cache that away. You can specify how long these things should be valid. And most of them are persistent. The admin banner or the banner that uh, Bill uh, already showed. This may be a message that you want to have really ad hoc. And maybe there's a system outage where you want to show it immediately, but then you also want to immediately revoke it again as soon as the situation is resolved. So this is how you can play around as an admin with that. And then again, the extension path extension enabled, I mentioned that already. So you already saw this quick example on the style customization before and after. Um, one last thing that I want to go into here is uh, a little bit on the content and how to think about the content. So um, particularly here, this is the ComHCL Connections Custom Style um, extension. And if you take a look in, uh, in this uh, documentation, you get to the same results from different angles. But this particular custom config extension part already lists out all of the different types that are supported and also um, links over to the respective um, properties and basically the payload that you saw that you would define for them. So this one would be the custom style one, can define things for the header area or for theming. Uh, since we did um, branding, theming, that's the one that we would want to click on. And then you can, uh, for example, check what exactly was done here. The generic color header was set. This is basically um, a intermediary that we define between CSS and, uh, and the admins so that you don't have to worry about finding the particular class or since connections um, has done that uh, a couple of different times in the past, uh, find all of the different classes and all of the different pages to make sure your specific change um, applies correctly. 
This is something that we do on our end. And then we expose uh, values that are consolidated that uh, we know are working well for particular um, purposes that you then would be able to uh, change. And for this color header, um, of course, here's a little bit more information on what exactly we're doing here. But you see all of the different properties that we allow. And for the color header, for example, you could see this is in the header area. This changes the background color. You also see our default values to know how you would want to change them. And you can also jump over into the component to get a little bit more information of what exactly the area is and also get some information from, from this angle on how you would want to do these configurations. So this is kind of how the documentation is structured for all of the different parts that we will, uh, that we will go through um, going forward. The different parts, and I'm just going to run through them here, and then I will uh, show to you um, all of the examples are the UI styles, where we saw that, the navigation, so changing entries, actions, access control, so you can also change navigation endpoints specifically for external, internal users, for um, users that have specific access rights like admins, metrics roles, etc., and positioning, where in the navigation that should be shown the header area, um, what elements to show, the positioning, and also very important, your logo, what kind of branding you want to have for the logo. The banner message, we already saw that, and uh, I want to um, pull that back also to um, one slide that I saw in Olaf's uh, presentation, where he showed this need for having these uh, critical messages and not wanting to write emails to everybody. So this would also be one approach to solve this by having that banner. Um, this kind of the intent of this. And then global search, um, Renee mentioned that as well as content sharing. Here we have uh, different search providers that you could have. For example, if you have a um, corporate search that aggregates all of the information and you want to have this as the centerpiece for your employees, you could change the search behavior to point there and content sharing. You, that's a feature since Connection 7 to um, share back into the activity stream. We also have um, extension points to share into Teams, and this just allows you to configure it and make it more extensible to potentially also share to Slack, to Zoom, to um, same time, and so on. Okay, for the demos, uh, you already saw a couple of the extensions, and I really just want to go through them and enable them one by one so you can see kind of um, what is happening and how these things um, could be used. So this is another um, custom styles one, just with a little bit more properties, a little bit more refined customization. So if I changed that here, you see it's again the screen color, but you also see that we now change the font, st uh, font style, changing a little bit of the font sizes, we're changing the colors of the buttons and the chips um, and the links. So you have a lot of uh, freedom in that sense to um, get your own theming, your branding, and uh, align that with uh, other pages that you have in your internet, for example. Um, one big thing that I want to mention here, and I, I, um, coming back to that, uh, if you want to know, uh, um, you see that if I click on home right now, um, right now you see a blue page, so the default page, and then a, a little bit later, you see the actual customization coming in. This is exactly what this cache expiration is for as well, so that it is persistent. On the one hand, it doesn't have to be reloaded all the time, but on the other hand, uh, of course, that we have this information straight away and can apply it straight away. So now um, it's loading one more time. It understands, oh, it should be cached now. And from then on, the information is immediately there and the experience is immediately updated. So this is uh, one more aspect for the, um, for the uh, caching, really. I'm going to disable that and uh, have to load it one more time so that it understands, OK, the Component is now disabled and we're back to blue. Okay, the next one that I want to show is the custom header. Um, this one, let's just quickly take a look into there. Um, defines here in the payload uh, changes for the top navigation. We would like to have the actions, that's this menu here, to be on the left side, left aligned. We want to have the logo to be positioned on the right side. And we want to change the source of the logo to the let's connect. Pick a picture so that you can expect the let's connect one. And then there is a new one, text. You don't really see text here. Uh, this is just text in the logo. It doesn't count. Um, but you can write any freeform text. And in that case, I want to write the text 2022. So I can have let's connect 2022. Order two, so it comes after the logo. And then also position right. So this is the kind of um, idea about this one. And 
let's refresh the page and see if it works. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, the actions now are left aligned. Our logo is adjusted to let's connect. We have our text 2022. This can be anything else, hashtags that can be the message out for what kind of environment you're on, etc. Of course, these uh, extensions also work in tandem. So I can enable, for example, the custom banner now. Let's take a look into this one as well. So this is our banner, should now be opened. It should uh, show as a success message and the message that we want to write. And this is here, as you can see, in HTML. So you can kind of put that into as well into your string if you want. We're live at connection, uh, Connect22, adding some more text and a link here. So if I now refresh that, we can see that our header styles still apply. And then in addition to that, we now have our admin banner where we see our message, we see our link. We can also change that to a info message instead of a success message to have that uh, displayed in a different color. And again, these colors work together with the style and theming under documented so that you can really play around with uh, what you would like to have in, in terms of branding. Um, next one I would like to show is the navigation. That's a very important one as well, of course. And if we look into here, they all uh, are defined as custom entries. Every single uh, thing that you want to change is defined as a custom entry. And uh, effectively, we have HCL connections here. We have Let's Connect here. We want to add both of those as new points. So we have new two new entry points in the, uh, in the navigation. And then we want to make some changes. We want to remove forums. We want to add home page with my home and update this one. So ultimately, let's see, did I enable that? Yeah. Um, this would result in your navigation updating by adding a new uh, point for HCL connections that gets you, uh, that brings you over to HCL connections page. Same for the let's connect. We can define if they're in the top or in the bottom. Um, I also changed home to my home. So text translations are also very easy to do. I removed forums. So yeah, this is really um, how we want to deal with the extensions. And over time, more and more components come in, more extensions come in. Um, we're looking, of course, for feedback, for knowing what the limits are there, uh, what you are expecting out of those. But yeah, this is really where we want to be with that. And I see we're pretty much on time. Bill already mentioned upgrade considerations are <laughs> kind of our uh, last optional topic. Um, there are some implications, but uh, not really a big, uh, big one. So you can definitely talk uh, offline or you can come back to us to get more information on the implications if you have already existing customizations and stuff like that. But yeah, with that, I would, to, I would give it back to Bill for one last time. Thank yeah, thanks. Much. Thanks. Uh, you know, Stefan, why don't we take just through, you're right, I don't want to go through each one of these upgrade slides, but there's yeah. there's this last slide I want to, it's basically just, the cosmetic and the functional globalization is basically saying the, the customizations that were capabilities that were there before that you had in Connection 7 should still work with some exceptions. I mean, they're going to be things like the header bars completely changed. So if you've got header customizations, those uh, will need to be reworked or just use the things that Stepan was already talking about to, to design them in a different way. We did, this side I wanted to focus on a little bit. We, you know, we recognize there's quite a bit of change going from seven to eight for the UX. Um, so if you do have a deployment that's got, that has been heavily customized, um, we do have an option within the configuration to actually keep the 7.0 UX. The 7.0 UX is still in the product for a while. Um, so we've got this thing where you can turn off the eight UX, uh, you know, while you kind of get your customizations tested and worked out, and then you can flip it back on. Uh, restart would be required, um, and as we mentioned, this is something we we can't we can't leave this forever. Um, we can't have both UXs. It's just it's just too too much um, engineering load on the back end for us. So um, we are thinking about you know pulling it out on in 80 CR2, which tentatively would be mid 2023. We're going to kind of play this by ear and see how the upgrades go and see what what more is needed. Have we forgotten some things? What what do we need to do? But that's our that's our current thinking right now. We're still going to stick around. So if there are any questions, feel free to drop it in the Q&A. But other than that, thanks a lot for being here and for the attention and giving it back to you once.